the biggest issue is cash bond. The after part, the biggest issue is expungement. Now, can we do better than we already did? Absolutely. Just like, you know, I hope my businesses can get more efficient next week. And there are new laws coming down the pike that are going to be introduced in this legislative session to make our expungement process in Michigan even better than what we're rejoicing about today. So look for it, support it, track it. We can do better than we've already done. So for example, when's the best time to have somebody get their record cleaned up? The day they need to get a job. When's the day they need to get a job? The day they get out or the day they're done being sentenced. You know, uh, however, our architecture for, for, for better or for worse makes people wait a long time in Michigan. We may, as well, we may as well make it. We're here for celebration, but we could do better. So I'm really proud that we sped up how fast we could get people's misdemeanors expunged, but we could do better on our back. We could do better on letting people know. We can do better on all of that stuff. So we shouldn't assume this work is done. Good work is never done. Good work can always be improved on. But it's also true that in Michigan, we gotta take a hard look at who we're locking up, how long we're locking them up, and why we're locking them up. And that all drives through our sentencing guidelines. That is the next mountain we've got to climb, is re-examining Michigan sentencing guidelines, making sure that what we are doing makes sense for the whole society, makes sense for public safety, makes sense as an investment of our time and the coercive power of government. So there's more work we've got to do. John, I didn't say hallelujah, this is all wonderful, because that's not me. At the end of the day, I'm glad you're all here. I'm glad this passed. I'm beyond, beyond happy. I mean, like, it wouldn't get much to make me start crying about the fact that a million people are gonna be helped today, about the fact that they don't need to have a lawyer. It means there's not gonna be a wealth test, and I say this is a lawyer, it, there's not gonna be a wealth test for automatic expungement, right? You don't need to go hire somebody. You don't have to, you don't have to be stay away because you're ashamed of your past. None of that applies because automatic cuts through shame, it cuts through money, it cuts through sophistication. You don't have to be sophisticated to get something off, off your record automatically. You don't have to be rich and you don't have to be proud. It just happens. So this is a beautiful day. This is a historic day. This is a day that other states in the country can and should copy. But we should go do better in Michigan so people can copy better and we should go fix every single part of our justice system. And we should not rest ever on this issue because if God put us on this earth for anything, is to care about our fellow citizens, is to exercise justice and mercy, is to exercise empathy, is to care about the person sitting next to you and the person who's not sitting next to you every day of your life as though they're more important than you are. That's the challenge of being a real citizen of Michigan. So thank you all, amen. Uh, would any of you guys believe he's the son of a minister? <laughs> just saying. Um, I also want to just uh, shout out Representative Graham Filler. Uh, he couldn't make it, he signed up in committee, but he and LeGrand worked together really closely. Filler was the judiciary chair and he uh, invested a ton of uh, resources and energy into um, shepherding this package through the legislature and um, deserves a lot of credit. I mean, just so you guys uh, know, it was 95 to 13 vote in the House and 29 to 8 in the Senate. So our next speaker is Sheena Mead, the CEO of the Clean Slate Initiative, a national bipartisan nonprofit organization that's dedicated to passing clean slate laws at the federal level and in all 50 states. I have more nice things to say about her. <laughs> you said nice things, uh, She's the founding CEO of the Clean Slate Initiative and has quickly built CSI into a hub for clean slate advocacy nationally and an engine for state campaigns. In the two years since Michigan's clean slate law passed, six more states have followed for a total of 10, in no small part, to Sheena and CSI. Now, prior to becoming CEO of Clean Slate Initiative, Sheena helped found the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition as its first organizing director. In that capacity, she helped lead the successful Amendment 4 campaign in 2018, which restored voting rights to 1.4 million people in Florida, 
who have been denied the right to vote due to a prior ballot. Um, she was regularly featured in national media. I'm not going to list all of them. She's on the board for Public Welfare Foundation, Policing Project at NYU School of Law, the Free USA, and the Florida Coalition on Black Civic Engagement. Um, and CSI is, is one of Safe and Just Michigan's national partners and provided critical support to the Clean Slate campaign and the implementation work we did here in the last couple of years. Um, so please welcome Sheena. You know, I'm an organizer. So when I say second, you say chances. Second, chances. I think we're at a celebration today, y'all. When I say second, you say chances. chances. Y'all give me a chance. Second. Chances. Second. Chances. Second. Chances. Second. Now say it like you mean it. Second. Chances. For real though. For real though. My name is Sheena Mead. I'm the CEO of the Clean State Initiative. And it's an honor to be here during Second Chance Month with Michiganders, I believe I said that right, in Michigan celebrating um, the automation of Clean Slate. Especially coming off from a few, this weekend, coming off a weekend where half the country was celebrating redemption, forgiveness, and second chances. It is fitting that we're here today talking about second chances. Michigan is the third state in the country to implement a clean slate law and that would create transform transformational change. And let me just say something about Michigan because when I first started Clean Slate, Michigan was the first state that I got to see pass. But it was done in a different way. It was done with, as, as a model for the country because it was done with intentionality. It was very intentional, the coalition here, making sure that they listened to the people. They listened to the community. They held listening sessions, town halls. They had directly impacted people at the table, grassroots organizations, bipartisan support. They had partners on the right, partners on the left, and policymakers. And that's the way we should be passing policies throughout our country in a holistic way where the whole community comes together. So when we pass a law like Clean Slate, it's just not happening under the dome, but the people who's gonna benefit already know that they feel like it is their policy that they have won. You know, Michigan has inspired other states um, since they passed it. Since passing Clean Slate, Connecticut, Delaware, Oklahoma, and Colorado has followed behind. And there are many other states that are following behind. I just wanna also say that um, this issue is, is bigger than just a campaign or a policy to me. I, I wanna talk about something that happened to me in 2004. It's funny because the other day, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a talk and they, they wanna fact check the talk. And I, I often talk, tell my story about how I wrote a check when I was a single mom for $100 that led to my arrest. And actually when I went to go pull up the affidavit, um, my arrest affidavit, I was really shocked. And I'm just reading these words that, that stood out to me. At the bottom of this affidavit from the district attorney it said, I do hereby state that I am instituting this prosecution in good faith. Those are the words that I read from a district attorney when I was arrested for a check that I had wrote for $82.76. Again, I wrote a check to feed my family for $82.76. And I was arrested that day. And I had thought that my sentence had ended once I paid off that check paid my fees, and they paid more fees for going to jail, because of course I was loaded with money, so they just kept coming for me. And I thought my sentence had ended. But little did I know that that arrest and that conviction would remain on my record, like it has for millions of people across this country. I was uh, faced with barriers, living where I want to live because it's legal to discriminate against people with a criminal record. I was uh, barred from trying to like pursue my higher education. I had to go through hoops to go to college, even trying to get a job. And today in Michigan, you all are removing all the red tape for the people that want to get the record clear. And let me be clear, across the country, there are 30 million people today who are eligible to get the record clear. But the, the process is costly, it's confusing, it's complex. People have to take off for work, and it's hard enough to find a job in the first place when you have a record. You have to pay fees, you have to get a lawyer, and you gotta go navigate a process that is just cumbersome and bureaucratic. And today, Michigan has removed all that red tape. Today, Michigan has removed the shame, as our elected officials said, have removed the stigma. And I just wanna leave y'all with this. And for the media that is here, and as y'all report, and as you talk to people, and as folks celebrate today, millions of people whose lives will be changed, 
Think about all the second chances you received in your life. Whether it was from your teachers, your parents, your loved ones, your community, and even our children, and how that felt. There is power in second chances in a clean slate. And I'm just asking y'all to just think about that and, and take that spirit as, as the rest of the month is for Second Chance Month and think about the millions of people's lives that we have impacted here in Michigan and also around the country. In Michigan, the country is watching you. They're watching how you're gonna show up for the people who's getting their record cleared. So I speak to all the employers today, to all the colleges and universities, and to landlords in Michigan. We have removed the red tape for the people who are eligible to get their record clear, who have paid their debt to society and remain crime free. And we're asking you to welcome them back into their arms. I want to thank y'all again and congratulations to Michigan for passing Clean Slate and implementing today. <laughs> Our final speaker today is Elvina Smith, who graciously traveled here from Detroit to talk a bit about what April 11, 2023, Clean Slate Day, means to her. Please join me in welcoming Elvina Smith. I know, I'm not sure if it's still morning or no, but I'm very happy to be here. I'm from Detroit and I have a felony that's about 18 years old. And I've always been considered an academic overachiever. And when you go to jobs and you apply and you test, they don't care about any of that. Um, I've always been, I've always had a high aptitude for math. So I'm in the finance department a lot and people just don't want you in accounting if you have a fraud on your record. That's just an honest truth and, and I understand. And it was 18 years ago, so just being a single mother, I also care for my disabled mother and I have two children. I've always loved school and mathematics and I hope to be a future entrepreneur, but with felonies, a lot of people don't want to invest in you or back you or be affiliated, their name affiliated with you. So this is really, really my lucky day. My horoscope said it was a lucky day for me today. And I'm just, I feel it. I feel it, felt it when I walked into the building. But um, one, in three, one in three people in America have a felony. So it's not unusual, it's not atypical. And it follows us to job interviews, if you apply for an apartment, if you apply for financial aid. Um, it stopped me from being able to volunteer in my children's school. I'm a big volunteer. I'm very hands-on with my children. I couldn't even volunteer in a lunchroom with a felony. But I learned from my mistakes. Um, like Mrs. that just left, you think you're finished, you, you serve your time, you do your probation, they have you doing alcohol and drug testing. I've never been a drug addict or an alcoholic. I had to report everyone um, to a person. They were very nice, but just a very intrusive process. Where are you living? Where are you working? How much do you make? Can you have your employer uh, write a reference? And sometimes when you find a job that hasn't checked, you don't want anything from them because now you have to tell them I have a felony, can you say I'm working here? So it became clear to me, at first I, I really did have an apathetic um, attitude about it. I didn't care, it didn't matter, it's just one felony, I'll make it. But just recently I applied for a job at a township in the building department. I was one of the highest um, test scores, um, three panel interview, I had to submit a six page report to even be able to get a testing date and two out of the three panelists were okay with me starting. But the third young lady, she went straight to the felony. Oh, so tell me about your felony. How did that go? Are you still uh, paying restitutions? No, it's 18 years old, once and done. I went to Oakland County Jail for six days. I was scared straight. I knew crime was not a life for me. And so, even though the conviction was almost 20 years old and I was placed on the waiting list to be employed, 
I did not receive the position. She called me over the weekend and she told me, we will not be moving forward. So I knew then there's something that has to be done because I'm overqualified for positions and I'm not able to get them. And the positions I have accepted, I'm earning at least 10,000 less per year just because they're understanding of a felony. And that doesn't sound like a lot per year, but that's a big difference, $10,000. So I'm still looking for rewarding positions. With these old items erased, my record won't follow me anymore. I can legally answer no with a clear conscience and not being nervous over the next few days with them calling back saying, we found something, something popped up. So, and I'm just one person. This is gonna be possible for a million other people. And that's a big number. And I'm, I'm happy for everyone who, who qualifies for the automatic expungement because to apply for it, it's a very confusing process. There's an application, you have to be fingerprinted, you have to have certified copies of your conviction, and you're giving this to the person that convicted you. So I'm like, why do I have to provide you with certified proof that you convicted me? <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, you have to make five copies of the application, you have to submit one to the people who convicted you to Michigan State Police. And getting these copies, I received my police report and it was full of inaccuracies. It's 18 years old, the lieutenant won't call me back. And this is something that I needed to say, you should erase this. But the information was so, so wrong that I would think a judge would look at it and deny me. It, it had a ton of inaccuracies. He accused me of not being able to spell and all sorts of things, hurtful things in the, in the police record. But it's important to remember that although a lot of people do qualify for an automatic expungement, there are still processes and access to people who <clears throat> do the clean slate petition process for more convictions to be clear if you have more than one or two. It takes a lot of work, but the payoff is so rewarding. Um, people were asking me about the free lunch today or if I'm gonna be paid. The ultimate payment is the clean slate. Being able to apply for jobs and houses and grants and this not following me. So if I had to catch a bus yesterday to get here today, I would have been here and I'd like to thank Kamal who helped me get here today from Detroit because it's over an hour drive. And he was so diligent. And once he told me, yeah, I'll help you get there, I was getting pings from everywhere. Hey, do you need a ride? I can pick you up. At the end of it, I was turning down rides. Like, no, I have a ride. Thank you so much. But I was amazed to also learn that a lot of the lawyers who were at the expungement fair that I attended they were volunteering. They were not charging anyone. It was a Saturday, it was cold, it was raining, it was a weekend before the holiday. So I was truly humbled at all of the volunteers, especially lawyers who can charge thousands of dollars an hour, were there for free. So I told everyone I know about it. My dad called, he's also being helped. He has a felony that's 40 years old and is still following him to this day. So if you have any old convictions holding you back, look into automatic expungement, find out whether those records have been cleared away. If not, if you need to petition to have those records removed, those felonies removed, there is free and low cost help if you need it. And tell everyone about the new opportunities opening up in Michigan for people who couldn't reach them before. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank everyone again, the people I rode with, come on for helping me, and whoever began the process for automatic expungements, because not only was it apathy, but it was also from confusion when I started to apply. I just gave up. So thank you so much. Thanks so much, Alina. That was, that was awesome. Um, to close out the speaking portion of the event, uh, I want to once again thank all of you for joining us here today and for your collective work to further the cause of criminal record sealing and the people who stand to benefit from it. 
Um, many people have helped make today possible, including many of you. Um, I have a few organizations and partners that I'd like to acknowledge specifically. Um, the business community, which was an early and vocal supporter of Clean Slate, especially the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce. Talent First, the Small Business Association of Michigan, the Detroit Chamber of Commerce. The Lansing Chamber of Commerce, the Saginaw Chamber of Commerce, and the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association. Also individual businesses that uh, supported the package, like Quicken Loans, DTE, Abcor, and Hope Network. And uh, Americans for Prosperity and the Mackinac Center also provided valuable support from a free market perspective. Um, I want to thank our national partners, including the Clean Slate Initiative, the Alliance for Safety and Justice, Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, the American Conservative Union, R Street Institute, Reason Foundation, and the Crime and Justice Institute. Uh, I want to especially thank our directly impacted partners and others who helped lead community outreach. It includes Nation Outside, JLUSA, Michigan Liberation, Michigan Faith in Action, and the Detroit Justice Center. Um, other key supporters of the Clean Slate package include the Office of Attorney General of Michigan, the City of Detroit and Project Clean Slate, the ACLU of Michigan, the Michigan Municipal League, especially the Urban Core Mayors Working Group, the Michigan League for Public Policy, the National Association of Social Workers, and the Michigan Center for Youth Justice. I'm sorry if I missed anyone. Uh, it was a few years ago that we were doing this. Um, and I know many others contributed in important ways that I'm not even aware of. Um, all that having been said, thanks again for coming, for celebrating with us. Um, enjoy. Can I have either Brooklyn or John? Yes. Or John? Yeah, why don't you come over here? All right, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.